I want to start off by asking you one question. Are there any movie directors out there who, no matter what movie they release, you always try to go out of your way and try to watch everything they put out? For me, one of those directors is Mike Takashi. Mike is one of those directors where I go into his movies expecting a Mike movie. I kind of know what to expect. Now, Terraformers is based on an anime and manga, which, like many of the adaptations I talk about, I haven't actually read or seen the source material. But it's alright, because movie adaptations are meant to be a separate experience from the comic and from the anime. Now, with that in mind, I went to Terraformers expecting not only an anime story, but also a movie experience molded by one of my favorite directors. And needless to say, I came out of this experience with the same kind of reaction I do whenever I watch any Mika movie. Basically, what? How's it going YouTube? My name is Ray and I'm just a guy who likes movies. Now let's start off by talking a little bit about the story of Terraformers. Basically, Terraformers takes place in the far off future where Earth is no longer the ideal place for living. Resources are being depleted, the world is becoming overpopulated, and overall it's just a dirty, dirty place to live in. So what does humanity do? It looks out to the stars to try to find the next place to live in, and their next target is Mars. Fortunately, the people in this future are far beyond making potatoes from poop. They actually develop a way to terraform Mars so that way it can be suitable to cater to the needs of human beings. Part of the trick behind that is that they send cockroaches, hundreds of cockroaches to Mars to help terraform the planet. So decades after they send these cockroaches to Mars, they decide to send a team of specialists to go and basically be a cleanup crew. Now this small team is actually composed of a wide variety of, to put it simply, bottom of the barrel scrapers. We have poor people, we have criminals, we have terrorists, we got Yakuza, we got gangsters. We even have a hikikomori or a shut-in. But the common point of this motley crew is that they all need some cash, so they sign up to do this job. But after arriving on Mars, the team come to realize that the cockroaches have actually evolved. They're now super strong, super fast, and humanoid in appearance, and above all else, out to kill some humans. However, fortunately, this team of vagabonds have been genetically modified, equipped with the necessary weapons to handle this kind of threat. Now when these mutated humans go off and fight these evolved cockroaches, what follows next is one of the coolest, most fun two hour fight sequences to be ever shown in any Japanese film. So let's dive in and start talking about it. One of the first things you should know about this movie is the director, Mike Takashi. Now if you don't know his name, you might know his movies. Some of his notable films include the original One Missed Call, Ichi the Killer, the film adaptation of the Ace Attorney video game, Visitor Q, Lesson of the Evil, the adaptation of the Yakuza video game, adaptation of the comic as the gods will, the zombie musical The Happiness of the Katakuris. But above all his movies, you should know him for the movie Audition, which was basically Saw before the movie Saw came out. That being said, go into this movie expecting a Mika film. Expect to see some bizarre and maybe grotesque visuals. Expect to feel weirded out. Expect to just be totally uncomfortable during the majority of this experience. Or, if you're a seasoned Mike fan, just expect business as usual. Now, other than Mike, the cast is loaded with a whole lot of big names from Japanese movies. Leading the cast is Ito Hideaki, who you might have seen play the crazy English teacher in Lesson of the Evil. Then we have Take Emi, who might have seen her in the three Rurouni Kenshin movies. Yamashita Tomohisa, who you might have known from the J-pop Bad News back in the day. The amazing Yamada Takayuki, who is basically in every movie nowadays. Oguri Shun, who was Lupin in the live action adaptation of Lupin III. Kikuchi Rinko, who has developed a huge following because of her Hollywood movie such as Pacific Rim, Shinoda Mariko, formerly of AKB48, Fukushima Rila, if you've seen the second Wolverine movie, and we have Kane Kosugi. If you're a fan of old school Super Sentai and you've seen Kaku Ranger back in the day, yeah, he's Ninja Black. So basically, we have pieces of a formula that's either sure to succeed or doomed to fail. We have a well-known director, a lot of big names in the cast, a nice production budget, and an extremely popular manga. But how did it do? Now let's dive into it. As usual, we'll talk about the goods and the bad. Let's start with the goods first. The performance of each individual actor was not bad at all. They're actually quite enjoyable. You can expect to be so with the big names they have in this movie. The best performance, I would say, would have to go to Oguri Shun as the quirky scientist with hidden intentions. You don't know entirely what he's up to, but you know it's not good. He's responsible for letting you know the science behind the world of terraformers and also for kind of helping move the plot along, letting you know what's going on in the background. But what stood out above the performances of this movie 
were the action and fight sequences. Now you know how Mad Max Free Road was basically a two hour car chase scene with a little bit of story dabbed here and there? Well Terraformers was essentially that in that it was a two hour fight scene with a little bit of story dabbed here and there. But it was pretty cool, you can actually picture the fight sequences in the movie actually being lifted straight from the comic and anime that it came from. And the CG used to enhance the fight sequences were not bad at all. They were actually top notch considering that Japanese cinema as a whole doesn't really utilize big budget special effects to begin with. But to really bring the world and characters to life, a mixture of CG and practical effects were utilized and they were utilized very well. Especially to capture the powers of each of the individual members of the team. Now remember how I mentioned earlier that each of the members of the team were genetically modified? Basically the DNA of each member was mixed with certain bugs and upon injecting himself with a certain chemical that each of them carries on hand, they can basically transform to utilize certain features of that bug for the purposes of combat. The main character can actually utilize powers of a hornet. Now you can really tell it's a Mika movie here with how really grotesque their characters look once they've transformed. And it's pretty damn cool. That being said, this movie is definitely worthy of being a Mika movie in that it'll make you feel really uncomfortable and that discomfort will give you a lasting impression long after you've finished the movie. But however, as visually appealing as Terraformers was, it doesn't really outweigh how many bad things I have to say about it. Now I mentioned earlier that I have never read the original manga. However, after watching this movie, I did a, I did some research on Wikipedia just to get a little bit more background on what I just watched. One of the biggest changes they made with this adaptation is they got rid of the international cast that had been written in the original story. In the original story, you had characters that came from different countries from different parts of the world. However, of course, in the movie version, they were all from Japan. Now, of course, they adapted the story a little bit to kind of fit that decision to make every member Japanese, but it still would have been nice to have a few international faces in the cast so it can make the story seem much more bigger than how it actually was. But something that's interesting is that the feeling of an international crew was kind of preserved, portrayed by certain characters just speaking random English out of nowhere, seemingly for no no real reason of but other than just to speak English. Obviously one of those members who spoke English was Kane Kosugi, who's actually Japanese American so you can be sure that his English was legit and grammatically correct. However, one of the biggest things that really hurt the movie was the size of the cast. Now on the advertisements, when you see all the A-listers posted in one giant photo, the first thing you think is like, hey, I gotta watch this movie. But then as you watch the movie, you realize the kind of setting these characters are thrown into and then you come to the realization that not every one of these characters are going to survive. First of all, let's point out that the actual number of crew members who go to Mars are, is far greater than the ones shown on the movie posters. So soon after you get introduced to the cockroaches, bodies start falling left and right. One of the main characters dies within the first 20 or 30 minutes of the movie. And the story kind of hypes it up like they're all sorts of important to the main character and the main character's development. And you just think that she would last longer, but nope, dead. Sure, character deaths are all a part of these kinds of stories, but however, many of these characters seem to die right after they just revealed what kind of power that they have. Oh, this person can transform into a beetle. All right, amazing fight sequence. Oh, dead. It's like each of the many characters exists for really one reason. They transform, then they either move the crew or fight, then they die. It leaves you very little time to get attached to any of these characters. I mean, they're so damn cool when they transform. You just kind of forget about them and then it just becomes just a waste. But it's okay, you might be thinking. The movie's just one long fight anyways, right? However, while I mentioned that this two hour long fight sequence was a good thing, it also is a double edged sword and it was kind of a bad thing also. It was good because, you know, visually it was fun, it was amazing, it was engrossing, it was all great. However, they took so much time to really set up this world of in Terraformers and the rules behind it and the story, the backstory, each of the main characters. But in the end, the story became more of a visual experience as opposed to something with more substance. So basically just watch this movie for the action. But the biggest, biggest gripe I have about this movie is the usage of Deus Ex Machina. Now if you don't know what Deus Ex Machina is, it's a plot device used to basically turn the situation around for the main character if he's backed against the corner with no hope seemingly in sight. And then something comes in and is essentially a cheat code. Suddenly the day is saved. Now I really can't say what that plot device is in Terraformers without spoiling the story, but just you'll know what it is when you see it. Now while this certain scene was visually impressive, in the end it just felt like lazy writing and just an attempt at adding drama to the story. Now the ending of the story kind of sets up or hints at a possible sequel or continuation to the story. However, only time will tell if that will actually happen. Now the manga actually continues. The movie just 
adapts the first major arc of the manga. Now with that in mind, the ending of the movie felt a little bit incomplete. Terraformers the movie is the result of movie execs jumping on the wagon of a current popular anime or manga and say, hey, we can make some more money, let's make a movie out of this. But because the manga isn't complete yet, they're forced to come up with a resolution just for the movie's sake. But hey, you never know, they might come up with a sequel to continue the story and bring it to a proper close. I just hope the next time around they can come up with a story that's both as appealing and satisfying as it is visually. But hey, what did you think of Terraformers? If you watched a live action movie, did it live up to your expectations that you had from reading the original manga? Or if you haven't seen the movie yet, what kind of things are you expecting that the movie bring to life? Whatever you think, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Asian Filmist for more reviews and discussions of Asian films. Also, don't forget to sign up for our email newsletter to receive a free copy of our ebook, The 108 Asian Films to Watch. Once Again, my name is Ray. Don't forget to hit me up on Twitter. And that's it. Alright, guys, I'm out to watch another movie. Be back soon.